And now our third speaker, Code 3008, The Ethics of European Tax Law, An Analysis. As a teenager, there's only one thing that I feel truly confident calling myself an expert on. Lying. What, come on, did you really think I was gonna talk about tax law for 10 minutes? No, I lied. Something that I do quite often, and well, if I do say so myself, quite well. No big lies though, just, um, just little white lies, you know? Stuff like saying, uh, I'll only have one cookie, or I'll be there in five minutes, or I wore pants during online tournaments, you know, lies. But the thing is, I learned all of these lies from the people in my life. You know, I learned to lie and say, I'll only have one cookie from my dad. I learned to lie and say, I'll be there in five minutes from my mom. And I learned to lie and say, I love you from both of them. <laughs> but it is not just me who lies. And it's not even just teenagers who lie, it's everyone from children to parents to Democrats to Republicans to, to judges who don't give me the one. Everybody lies. And yet for something so common in the world around us, lying is dangerously unobserved. So let's observe it. First, by looking at the neurological processes behind lying. Then analyzing the ethics of lying. And finally, by taking a deep dive into the dystopian dumpster fire that is our world and looking at all the lying around us. So what exactly is lying? <laughs> Thank you so much, it's been a great week. I'm Matt Hecker. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> lying is a lot more complicated than it might first seem because lying is all in your head. And I mean that quite literally. This is a diagram of your brain. Now, ignore all of this stuff, it just does like, like vision and memory, the stupid things. This is your frontal lobe. According to Johns Hopkins University, your frontal lobe is in charge of all of your voluntary thoughts and actions. But more specifically, this is your prefrontal cortex. Your prefrontal cortex is in charge of your complex thoughts, your complex actions, and the most complex of all, lying. And yeah, I really do mean most complex because lying requires a multitude of skills that we only get as our brains develop with age. The first of these skills is deontic reasoning, the ability to understand rules as well as the consequences for breaking them. For example, uh, if my parents asked me where I was last night, I know that I can either lie and say I was practicing my speech, <laughs> or I can tell the truth and admit that I was at a party. I'm kidding, speech kids don't get invited to parties. <laughs> but if we were invited, I know that admitting that to my parents would get me grounded for eternity. The next important skill is the theory of mind, the ability to understand what someone is thinking and then predict what they'll think next. Sticking with the same example, if I really did tell my parents that I was at a party, I mean, I know that they just wouldn't believe me. <laughs> Because with a new COVID variant and cases spiking in my town, my parents know that I, well, well that I still don't have friends. <laughs> but both of these things, deontic reasoning and the theory of mind, are crucial in allowing us to lie. Because again, lying is so hard for our brains to do. I mean, just think about it this way. When we tell the truth, we simply recall what happened and say it. But when we lie, we have to recall what happened, use deontic reasoning to figure out if we have to lie, formulate a lie, use theory of mind to know if our audience will accept that lie, revise that lie, and then say it. And now that we've looked at how we lie, when is it ethical to lie? Well, quite a few philosophers have had quite a lot to say about that. And wouldn't you guess the philosophers, they're actually disagreeing. One thing, however, that they do agree upon is that there are two main types of lying. 
lying for the benefit of yourself, and lying for the benefit of others. Their difference in opinion boils down to whether either of those lies are ethical. If you ask German philosopher Immanuel Kant, he'd say that neither is ethical. See, Kant believes in what's called the categorical imperative, a moral obligation to always do what's right. And any deviation from this imperative corrupts your character. And once you guess, lying is one of those deviations. A report from Oxford states that Kant is the most well-known defender of an absolute prohibition against lying. And Kant himself even went so far as to say, you are not to lie, whatever the intent may be. Now, the flaws in his argument are, well, I mean, like, they're obvious, right? It ignores the complexity of real life. However, the opposite side of the argument is not much better. Italian philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli is most well known for his book, The Prince, where he outlines every strategy that a politician could and should use to gain power. You know, stuff like, um, like colluding with known enemies or, uh, or, or making false promises to the public. You know, stuff that, stuff that stayed in 1532. <laughs> but the root of all of his strategies is lying. Machiavelli himself admits in The Prince, men seldom rise from low condition to high rank without first employing fraud. See, in Machiavelli's eyes, success is the most important thing in life. And if you want to succeed, well, you're going to have to lie. So lying for the benefit of others or for yourself are both A-OK, -okay, as long as you get something out of it. Which makes it pretty clear that, well, I mean, both sides of this argument suck. <laughs> and that's why it's good that there was someone in the middle, Plato. Plato is the most famous philosopher for a reason. He was like, like actually smart. And not just like, um, oh, you know, kind of like a, um, kind of like a, like a pretentious older brother who goes to college and then he takes like one single intro to philosophy course. But then he comes home over winter break and he lectures you for three hours over dinner about how actually, Matt, not letting philosophy is in and of itself a type of philosophy. Like, shut up, Ryan. Sorry, um, Plato. <laughs> Plato, in Book Three of the Republic, condemns what he describes as the selfish lie, yet he condones what he describes as a noble lie, which is a lie told for the benefit of the citizens. See, Plato was the only one smart enough to realize that lying depends on context. And now that we've looked at how we lie, and we've looked at when we should lie, it's finally time to take a good look at all the lies in the world around us. And where better to start than by looking inward? Because yeah, I know it's corny, but we make up the world around us. And that means that we make up the lies around us. Which then begs the question, why do we lie? Well, according to Paul Ekman, professor of psychology at UC San Francisco, the main reason for lying is to avoid. Avoid things like awkwardness, embarrassment, or punishment. In other words, avoid anything we deem uncomfortable. Now keep that in the back of your minds when I tell you that a study at the University of Massachusetts Amherst found that in a 10-minute conversation, 60% of people will lie at least once. And the majority of those lies will actually be about themselves. You put two and two together, and you see that we lie to avoid discomfort, and we lie about ourselves. Painting the picture that we are uncomfortable with ourselves. But that's not just speculation. A study at the University of Rochester found a direct correlation between frequency of lying and low self-esteem. That's why we lie and say things like, I'll only have one cookie because we don't want to admit the truth that sometimes we have a hard time with self-control. That's why we lie and say things like, I'll be there in five minutes, because we don't want to admit the truth that sometimes we have a hard time with time management. And that's why we lie and say things like, it's fine, don't worry about it, or I'm okay. 
We don't lie because we want to. We lie because we feel we have to in order to be the people that we want to be. Now, I can't give my opinion on lying. I mean, like, literally, I can't. That's like the main thing of info. <laughs> but even if I could, I don't really know what I would say. I mean, lying isn't a good thing, but it's definitely not a bad thing. It's just a thing. A thing that I am fascinated by and that I willingly chose to spend every weekend of the past 10 months talking about. <laughs> but if you wanted to stop lying, which again, I would never encourage nor discourage. <laughs> if you wanted to stop lying, it would come from accepting yourself and accepting your flaws and accepting your truths as uncomfortable as they may be. And if you want, I'll start. <clears throat> as a teenager, I do not know what I'm doing. I mean, I, I don't know what college I want to go to. I don't know what I want to major in. I don't know what the next five years or five months or five minutes of my life is going to look like. And honestly, I'm terrified. I'm perpetually scared because I feel perpetually unprepared for the life ahead of me. However, there's one thing that I feel truly confident calling myself an expert on. Lying. <laughs>